Well, it's not much, but it's home. The whole Henry thing was an, was an accident in a strange way. Uh, it was 1970, I was, it was November, I was on a Yes tour, and my first Yes tour with Yes in America, and we were at a little airport in upstate New York, a really small airport with um, getting a little, tiny little plane to somewhere. And the airport, as I say, was really small, and it didn't really have a shop or anything, it was just you sort of walked out this tin hut onto the, the plane. And it had just a little small confectionery stall, and it had a stand with some books on it. Um, in fact, there was there was exactly twelve books because I can re remember. And I and I read a lot. I like I like reading. This is of course before the days of personal Walkmans and things like that that you could you, you could have. So we all bought books. We all read. And there was the most appalling selection of books. A book called The Private Life of Henry VIII. I thought well, that looks interesting. And I, I picked, and I bought that book. The interesting thing is, I don't know if there'd been a, a collection of 500 books to choose from, if actually I would have bought, bought that book, because you normally tend to do more lighter reading when you're on a, on a plane. And as I'm reading about Anne Boleyn, there'd been a piece of music I'd been working on, writing. It literally came, came back, in my, in, back in my head. And all the while I was reading about Anne Boleyn, this, this melody kept going through in my head. I thought, that's interesting. Why, why that, would, that would come? Because it had no title, this, this more bit. And uh, I remember putting the, the, the book in the, in the front of the seat in front of me and thinking about what I'd read and thinking about this tune, which was only very, very short, and it, and it developed sort of straight away. I thought, I wonder, I just wonder. So I went through the book of Merton and, and, the, and, and found a, a, a bit about Catherine Parr and just read, just read, initially just read a small amount. And another melody came into, into my head. And, and I can't say the melodies are related to what I was reading, but they just came flying in my head and I thought, this, this is something that, that I've really got to do. So what I did over the next week, whatever town I arrived in, I just went and bought loads and loads of books, not just on the wise, but on, on Henry, the history, and in fact, on the whole Tudor period. I always carry a manuscript book, started writing loads of themes, loads of ideas down. And, and really, that's how the album uh, was formatted and came about. When I came back from that uh, American tour, first thing I did was come down here, um, which, was, which was very important, um, just to get more of a feel because whenever I do or especially when I used to do concept albums back in the, in the 70s and this was the first one that I did uh, you have to get heavily involved you have to immerse yourself in it what was interesting was I never ever tried um, to look at any of the wives lives and try and match the music to their lives it was just feelings that I got musically that, 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 that went to them um, I can remember coming down to Hampton Court in, in, it would be 1971, in early 1971, and it was a totally different um, visit for me because it had a purpose rather than just coming and having a, you know, having a look around. Um, and I have been down at least once every year since, funny enough. Some years, three or four times. This is a part of Hampton Court Palace I never ever thought I'd get to see up on the roof. In early 1972, I decided that, uh, even though I was very busy with the Yes, um, that I wanted to do one concert of the Six Wives of Henry VIII. And there was only one place I wanted to do it, and it was here at Hampton Court. So through my management, we wrote all the right letters, uh, all the polite letters, uh, to the right places, uh, to see if it would be humanly possible to do. Um, apparently, what I'd asked for in 1972 was about on par with treason and uh, I think if I'd have tried any further I would have either have been beheaded uh, or sent to the tower. What's fantastic is all the celebrations that are going on here at Hampton Court for this wonderful Henry celebration of the 500th year. Uh, what's interesting is that I would have come to most of it anyway. I certainly would have come to the gardens and a lot of the pageants and a lot of the concerts and things. So it's, uh, it's actually really very special to be part of it as well. So uh, it's really strange when the concerts are over, I'll be back down here throughout the rest of the year. Have I got any Henry traits 
that I know of that are sort of somehow inbuilt in me. Well, there's obviously the slight weight problem, although he was very sylph-like in his early days, so I intend to be sylph-like by the time of the concert. And as for wives, I'm ahead of you, Henry. This is certainly going to be 1970s prog rock meets the 21st century because we're using a lot of 21st century stuff here. It's going to be what I like doing best, which is huge. You can have a 72 piece orchestra, 7 piece band, 40 piece choir, guests, dancers, effects, all sorts of things. In fact, when you consider that Henry was just a wonderful patron of the arts and really pushed things forward so much and, and liked big extravaganzas. That's, he, he was a, an amazing man when it came to that. So I might just leave one seat at the front just in case he wants to come back and have a look.